I'm Jeanette Keynes, an instructor here at Jewelry Arts Institute, and I'm here for About.com. We're going to today learn to do a pair of bezel set earrings. We're going to need some 15,000 fine silver, a pair of sterling posts, tooth cabochon, bezel mandrel, a third arm, paste fox, scissors, tweezers, file, round nose and chain nose pliers. And once I get ready to set, I'm actually going to use just a piece of two by four, double stick tape, and a rocker pusher. Our first step is going to be making the bezel. We cut the end nice and straight. I'm going to use a bezel mandrel just to start forming my circle. This is the fit really that I'm looking for. It goes in and out easily. Now since this is going to be the other side of my seam, I have to pay particular attention and make sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to butt the two ends together very tightly. Place it in the kiln with my seam up. I'm going to use the flame and go right around the piece to get it nice and hot. And you see how the seam starts to glow? That tells me it's hot enough to fuse. I'm going to pull back and use just my feather tip, which is the end of the flame. It just disappears, so there is no more seam. I have to check it and really make sure that the seam has disappeared completely. So I'm going to put it back on the mandrel. I'm going to roll it nice and round to make sure it fits my stone. This is the fit that you really want. Um, I'm using this uh, micron graded sanding paper, but you can use 400 sandpaper from the hardware store just as well. Once I make sure I have both sides nice and flat, then I'm going to take a little back sheet like this. I'm going to anneal it in the kiln to make sure it's nice and soft. I usually just let it rest on a steel block. I'm just going to flatten it right between my steel blocks. I'm going to use IT solder for this. That's the highest melting solder. You don't really use it with sterling. I like to ball it up. I find the balls easier to place, but you can use the little squares also if you like. Dip them in the paste box. Put it inside the bezel right up against the edge. You can move the flame around a little bit, but keep it right on the piece. What I'm really watching is just that outside seam. The second I see the solder flow around and fill it, you stop heating. Then I'm gonna dunk it in the water. I'm gonna throw it in the pickle for a couple minutes. Now that I've soldered, it'll clean it off. We just have to double check and make sure the solder has flowed everywhere completely and there aren't any spaces. Uh, we're gonna trim the excess away. An important thing when you're cutting is to keep the scissors really parallel with the side of the bezel. You don't wanna angle them in and end up really kind of cutting into your back sheet or cutting your seam open. When she files, she's gonna let the file really ride right along the side of the bezels. You wanna use the sandpaper the same way you use your file. We're also going to sand the bottom. I'm gonna cut a very small piece of medium solder. Just gonna dip it in a little bit of paste flux. Put my post in the third arm so that it holds it. I'm gonna keep my heat low, and while I'm soldering, I'm just gonna keep my finger on top of the third arm so that when the solder flows, I can apply just a very slight amount of pressure. And that's it, that's all it takes. When you set a cabochon, normally what you want is about one third of the stone in the bezel and two thirds of it out. You wanna hold the rocker pusher at, a, at um, at least a 45 degree angle to really press the bezel up against the stone. Um, you know you're finished when you've got two things, when you have no space showing between the stone and the bezel and no wiggle whatsoever if you use your finger and try to move the stone around. Thanks for watching. To learn more, join us on the web at about.com.